Alright guys, welcome back. So, in the past couple videos we've been going over my, my hack box, which is far from just this box. We also got this little bin here and we'll go over what's in here in future videos. Previous videos we've gone over my, my inputs and outputs, kind of the, the jelly bean parts of my, my box here, you know, resistors, caps, transistors, sensors, what have you. Um, and the last video we went over my power supply area so a nice little power strip and relays and you know anything having to do with powering my projects so the last section is this part of this area over here and this is my microcontroller and programmer section so this is where i keep all my my little programmers my micros so we're gonna take a look at what we have in here today so first things on top is this little uh, this is an AVR programmer, and it's uh, it's a it's a SparkFun. You guys are probably you, you guys know SparkFun. Uh, if not, SparkFun.com, great place. I've used them for years, and honestly, they're you know they're overpriced, but they have great quality control. So you know that when you buy it, it's gonna work. It's not gonna be like buying this on eBay, where it's probably a 50/50 chance that it you know knock off crap component you know something's crap off the bat so here i got myself a little avr programmer and i use this i i tend to use this because or keep this in here because one of my favorite little microcontrollers are the at tiny 85s so i don't use these as much as i probably should uh but these are great little guys they're you know they're they're eight bit microcontrollers. They run uh, I think without a crystal you can get them up to you might be able to do sixteen megahertz, but definitely eight megahertz. Yeah, they're older. Yeah, a lot of your bigger projects out there are gonna way surpass the I/O and the 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 you know space on these. They don't have a lot of space. But that being said, you got a simple project. You just want to turn a light on or off, read a sensor, do something like that. They're cheap. They're easy, you don't need any real extra, you, you can just put power on these things and they'll run. You don't need any other components. So these are great, I keep at least a couple of them around and that's why I keep the AVR programmer around. And I also have to go with them uh, some little dip sockets here. So dual inline sockets, that way you know, even on a breadboard the little, the little pins there, they don't love to sit in the breadboard happily. And so I'll use a socket on the breadboard, and especially I'll use a socket if I'm doing anything on a proto, proto board. Because uh, I really, I'm honestly not ever going to solder one of these onto a proto board, proto board because I'm always changing my firmware. I'm, well, i got to go back and change it, so you don't really want to have to solder it. Yeah, you could solder it and then put in an ISP header, but... Well, you know, who wants to do that? So I'm not going to do that in the field. So, yeah, great little micros. Keep them around. They're cheap. They're, you know, maybe a dollar a piece. They're wonderful. So keep those around. Next up on the chopping block. Oh, actually, one last thing about my, uh, the AT Tinies. This is a little board I made probably seven or eight years ago. Way early. Eh, crap soldering job. Look at that. This is what I use to actually program the AT Tinies. I just got a little header there and pop it in the socket. I actually have some little proto prototyping headers on it so that, yeah, if I really wanted to, I don't even have to take it out of that board to prototype. I usually do, but it's a nice little board to keep around. I think these oversized headers on either side, those that must be uh, extra, extra pins for positive and negative. Um, so great little, eh. Well, it's a piece of crap, really, but very useful. So, my most recent love, love, I have fallen in love with these. The ESP8266 modules. These guys are fantastic. They are, I believe they're even a 32-bit micro inside. So, you got 32-bit microcontroller with a full Wi-Fi stack and hardware built on board and uh, initially these were a huge pain in the ass to program but in recent months and uh, probably for about a year now they somebody has written code for these for Arduino programming so you can now open up your Arduino IDE 
and digital write and you know analog read write they are fantastic i've been using these all around my house they are uh you can get them they've been dropping like stones on ebay you go to somewhere like spark fun buy it it's like seven dollars a piece that's what i'm saying it's a little expensive but on ebay you can buy these for two dollars a piece and they're just falling i mean i three months four months ago i was buying them for 250 a piece and they, so they've come down 50 cents sure they may very well be knockoffs. This might not actually be the original chip here made by the correct manufacturer, but honestly, who cares? If it works, it works. Very powerful little microcontroller. Lovely, they, they get pretty good signal quality, uh, just even on the little onboard antenna there. Uh, wonderful little microcontrollers. I honestly could, you know, I probably will in the future have a whole video dedicated to these. Lovely, lovely little modules. And this here is another, a different version. So they come in, in different form factors. This is actually the uh, either 07, so these are the 01 modules. This is either the 07 or the 09. I cannot remember, they have a similar footprint. But because they don't have the, this module does not have these 0.1 uh, inch or whatever it is, the, you know, the correct, the normal pin spacing, I think it's what, 0.1? These have got the, uh, I can't remember what the, what the pin spacing is, but it's the non-standard pin spacing. Well, standard, but not so standard, not breadboard standard. Uh, so I have it on a little carrier board that fits in a breadboard. These guys are wonderful though. Cheap. These are also a dollar. They're all, all the, all the ESP modules are between, you know, uh, two bucks and two fifty. So great little modules for nice and cheap. They've actually begun to replace any any time I'd really use an AT Tiny. These have almost begun to replace that. Uh, great modules, great great modules. So my heavy duty microcontroller. Whenever I need some something real, there it is. The Teensy made by uh, ah I can't remember his name. This is the Teensy 2.0. I actually don't have. Actually, that's a lie. In my hack box, I actually do keep. So there's this is the Teensy 2.0, and here this is a Teensy actually 3.1 or 2. The difference is that this is uh, actually I believe this is in. Yeah, these are at Mega 80 Megas. Um, basically, this is an Arduino. Uh, almost exactly. It's got some extra little bits and different form factor, but in effect this is an Arduino micro or nano or mini, but too many Arduinos out there. This is an Arduino, great I.O., lots of pins, probably meh, 20 or so pins on there. It's even got a couple different, uh, I think might have two or maybe even three serial ports. What I loved and the reason I actually started using these was that this, the, the AT, actually it's maybe not an AT megabytes, it is an Atmel processor. It's got native USB on board. So similar to the Arduino Yun and some of the new Arduino boards that have native USB built into the chip, this has native USB. And in fact, this was out way before those newer boards. So you can use this to emulate a keyboard, a mouse, joystick, whatever you want. So I love, love these little guys. Uh, I will probably do a whole video series on my favorite different microcontrollers and the different features that I love about each of them. But this is a great, great little guy. I also do keep its big brother here, the 3.1 or maybe it's the 3.2. This is actually a 32-bit um, Cortex processor here. So very high powered, runs at like 96 megahertz. Ah, it's got just huge amounts of storage. I think it might even have like uh, I can't remember, maybe 512K, and then maybe 32 of RAM. So just plenty of plenty of space for whatever you want to do. Even more pins. It's got a built-in uh, real-time clock. DAC, I think it's either got one or two DACs on board. Uh, a couple of, uh, at least one true ADC. I, th just way blows any standard Arduino out of the water great device but yeah great board i also keep one of these around i love the teensies they're they're cheap this is 20 bucks this is now like 15 dollars. even cheaper than arduinos practically actually yeah definitely cheaper than arduinos and more powerful 
and can be programmed through the Arduino IDE. Great, great devices. So, moving right along, we got, uh, well, we got a little programmer here. This is just an FTDI programmer. So I actually use this. I've, I've modified this, although I can still run normally. I have modified it to output on here. I've got, I've soldered on to it a little uh, LM1117 3.3 voltage regulator and added a couple of extra little headers here. And I just got the standard, you know, positive, negative, and data lines wired out using uh, jumpers. But I had to do this. I had to modify this programmer because these little ESP modules, for as amazing as they are, use so much power. This little thing will draw a good 100 to, you know, good 100 milliamps, even practically idling. Well, maybe idle might be more around 60. But point is, they draw a lot of power. And the moment you turn the radio on and you, use, you need to transmit anything, jumps up to like three or 400 milliamps. And so, you know, you need a lot of power to run these, relatively speaking. So, although this module will run and will output 3.3 volts, with the stock regulator that it's got on board, which I actually think might be regulated off the FTDI chip itself, there's just not enough power. It's, it just chokes and either this will, will, you know, brown out or you won't get, it just, it won't work. You might be able to get to program, but you certainly can't really test anything plugged into here. So I basically pulled five volts from the USB directly and put it going through this LM1117 with a little bit of filtering on it and added a little, an extra little header here. And that gives me a good stable fairly high current 3.3 voltage out on board can still obviously I haven't destroyed any of the the board itself so I can still use it for 5 volt or or you know any it's still a perfectly good board for any kind of programming but I have added this higher powered 3.3 volt line which is important to programming these ESP modules so I have that and along with that, actually, is my little fabric cobbled little ESP module programmer. So I've gone through a couple different iterations of creating little programmers. This is something I created like the night that I got my ESP modules. The ESP module just fits right in on there. And then it's got some headers there that I can socket in my data and power wires. So, and it's got a little onboard button. The important part about the button here is that in order to enter programming mode on these guys, you actually have to pull, you gotta pull one of the pins, I think it's low, you gotta pull it to ground. But that's only to enter pro the programming interface. So, sometimes, you know, I just wanna, you know, be able to power this on and test some functionality. I don't always want it to be going to programmer interface when it's on this. So I hooked up a little button here and I can just, you know, when I plug it in, I just hold down the button on power on, it enters programming interface and I let go and then I can upload whatever program I want. So useful little thing I made. Maybe I'll make a video showing how to make one of these. It's pretty simple though. Not very well made as you can see, but it works. And then in the bottom of this, I guess, eh, just crappy little parts. I, you know, I get a little Wi-Fi module, which has really nothing to do with my microcontrollers, but eh, it's something useful to keep on hand. I should probably move it to a different section of the box. And I got here, again, I haven't actually used this too much, but I can definitely see myself being in a pinch and needing this. This is a mini USB female to micro USB male and it includes data. So you're stuck, you only got a mini USB, but you need to do something with micro. Well, here's a little adapter here. Eh, it's nice to keep on hand. I like it. And eh, I'm not even gonna bother taking these out. You guys know what those are. Those are headers. I got both male and female headers. Keep them around, you know, you're prototyping, breadboarding, doing this and that. You need a header, you need a header. So. Oftentimes, well, they're not really going to be all that useful without a soldering iron and soldering the header to whatever it is, the male or female, what, whatever. But, hey, keep it on hand. Maybe you're at a place where you got a soldering iron and you can do it up. Um, I do plan on some point at getting myself a nice small 
little soldering iron. There is a really nice one that I'm looking at. It's the Seed Studio. Uh, the little, just the little tiny soldering iron they got. I'm probably not going to get it for a while. We'll see. But, you know, probably not going to get it. So that sums up everything in this box. Uh, in the next couple videos, I don't know how many videos it'll be. Probably maybe, well, one, maybe two. We'll go over what's in the rest of the box and kind of my setup in here. Because this is just my, my sort of raw components. And the rest of the box has got some extra stuff. Just, you know, breadboards and little computers and this and that. So, you know, we'll get into it. For now, well, thank you guys for watching. I uh, hope you guys have found these videos, you know, informational so far. I certainly, I started building this, this kit, you know, uh, just a couple months ago when I realized, well, I'm on the move a lot and... It'd be really nice to just have a good set of components with me wherever I go. I don't need a lot of them, but I do need some of them. So I hope this has been helpful for you guys, and the next video we'll get into the rest of it. Take it easy, guys. See ya.